Hey everybody, welcome back. Sorry it took a little bit longer to get this video out than usual. I've been going through a series of interviews for a new job, but the good news is I got the job and now I can devote some time to this series again. So in the previous episode, we made sure that the swap chain that we were about to create was supported and we set up some functions to retrieve the settings for it. So now it's time to actually create that swap chain. So first off, we're gonna need to create the swap chain itself. So we're gonna create another handle for that. It's going to be down here with all the other handles. It's starting to get really messy in here. Eventually we're going to probably need to clean this up a little bit. So right underneath the display queue, we're going to add, uh, once again we need to wrap it in the vDeleter like everything else. So there's vDeleter. And the type of object that we're wrapping is a VK swap chain KHR. There it is. We'll just call that swap chain. do that. And then you need to pass in the logical device and the destroy function, which is going to be bk destroy destroy swap chain khr. There it is. Okay. And one thing that's important, like I put it under the display queue, and if you're following along with me, it'll all work nicely, but this does have to be declared after the logical device, because we are passing the logical device into it, and since C++ will clean up everything in, re um, in reverse order to the order it was created, the swap chain has to be cleaned up before the logical device is cleaned up, or you're going to end up with some problems, so as long as it's underneath the logical device and the declaration, you're fine. Alright, so now we actually need to create the swap chain associated with that handle. So we're going to add another function for that. Just move up to all these little create functions. And right underneath create logical device, we're going to add in a void create swap chain. There we go. And we're going to bring that over to the CPP file. And get my bearings here. Right underneath create logical device, let's go ahead and drop that in there. Again, add the scope. Alright, so we're going to create this in reverse order like we usually do just because it's a little bit easier to explain. So to get started we're actually just going to call the create function. So just put a comment here. Attempt to create swap chain. So if and we're going to say uh, vk create swap chain khr. And this requires a few arguments. You need the device, which refers to the logical device, the um, create info, which we're going to have to create, the callbacks, which we don't really worry about, and then a pointer to the actual swap chain handle. So for the device, we pass in logical device. We don't have the create info yet, but I'm going to go ahead and just write a reference to the create info. We're going to create that in a second. Null pointer, and then swap chain, and since again we are using the vDeleter, we call replace. Okay, And we want to check whether or not that works, so we, uh, if it's not equal to vk success. Go ahead and throw an error again. STD runtime error. We're just going to say failed to create swap chain. And if it succeeds, we'd like to know that, so we'll go ahead and do a C out. And we'll just say sw swap chain created successfully. There we go. Okay, so in theory that should create our swap chain for us, but again we need that create info, so now it's time to start actually building that. Alright, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna create another uh, create info, and we're just gonna call it, uh, this type of, is a VK swap chain create info KHR, so. Uh, there it is. And We'll just call it create info. And there it is. Now we haven't initialized anything yet. 
and we're going to do that in a second, but the thing is, the create info in this case is actually going to require a lot of the information that we set up to be retrieved in the previous video. Remember, we made all those helper functions, and we had the nice, um, over here, it was the uh, swap chain support details. We're going to use a lot of that to set up this create info, so let's actually retrieve all that data before we get started. So I'm going to make another comment here, get support details for swap chain, and we're going to just create a new instance of the swap chain support details struct. We're going to call it swap chain support. And to fill that, we're going to call the query swap chain support function that we wrote before and just pass in our physical device that we chose. Okay, so that's going to fill that with all the data that we need. And now we need to use all the helper functions. So use helper functions to optimal settings. Okay, and we're gonna call all three of them. So what um, we had a VK surface format KHR. There it is. We'll just call that surface format. And we call choose swap. There it is. Choose swap surface format. And we're just going to use all the data that we retrieved in swap chain support to call these functions. So we just swap chain support and we pass in formats. So it's taking all of the available formats and it's going to choose the optimal setting. Same for this one. So VK present mode, KHR present mode, and choose swap present mode. Once again, swap chain support, present modes. And the last one, VK extent 2D, extent equals choose swap extent. And that'll be swap chain support capabilities. OK, so that's going to retrieve everything we need. Just put another note here. Um, fill in data for create info. There we go. So we've got all the information we need. Let's start filling this out. So it's going to be most of the same stuff we're used to. Create info, S type. And it's going to equal VK structure. Structure. There we go. Type. Swap chain. Create info KHR. There it is. All of these are very long and wordy, but that is okay. All right, so create info surface. And we already have a surface, so we can just set it to surface. That's the one that we made earlier. Just telling it where it is going to be rendering to. All right, now this is going to get a little weird right here. We actually need to set up the image count for the swap chain. So first off, let's actually just set up the the section to fill it in. So it's create info dot min image count. And we're going to fill that out in just a moment. But the idea here is this is telling you how many images the swap chain contains. And since the swap chain is a queue of images to display, um, there's going to be a certain number of images. It can adjust it, but it needs to fall between the min image count and the max image count that are stored in the capabilities variable in the the that we retrieve from swap chain support. So we want to add some code in to calculate what the proper number of images should be in this case. And there's a minimum number that's been retrieved, but since I'm following along with Alexander's tutorial uh, and we chose the mailbox presenting mode, you can actually implement triple buffering of the images. And to do that, we're going to want to make sure that we have one more than what the minimum image count is so we have enough images to do so. So we need to calculate all that. So right here, just above it, we don't need to put it in any special spot. We're going to declare another uint 32t, and we'll call this image count. And this one we're going to set to swap chain support. I can't spell swap chain support dot capabilities dot 
min image count plus one. Okay, so that's exactly what I said we needed. It's the minimum that it can support, one above that. So that pretty much gives us what we need. Um, we're going to go ahead and say equals image count. But we're going to do one other check. So right in between here, we want to check whether or not the um, capabilities has a maximum image count. And if it does, we want to make sure that we haven't exceeded it. So the way we're going to do that is we're just going to say if swap, swap chain support dot max oh nope sorry capabilities dot max image count is greater than zero if it's set to zero that means it doesn't have one and image count is greater than swap chain support capabilities it's all the same stuff max image count there we go. So what this does is it checks if there is a max image count, and then it checks if the image count has exceeded it. And if it has, then we're going to go ahead and just say image count equals swap chain support capabilities max image count. So that way it can't exceed it because if it has, we just set it right there. And you know what, I'm going to just save a little space here. Let's cut some lines out there. There we go. So this will, I'll just put a note. Uh, so get proper image count. There we go. And now we can continue on with the create info like we were doing before. Oh, lagging a little bit. Create info image format. And a lot of these are just going to be assigned by what we looked up before. So surface format, format. Okay. Uh, we have create info, image color space. And this is just going to be surface format, color space. See, all this gets real easy because we just looked it up already. Uh, create info. What have we got next here? It's the image extent. That's just going to be the extent. All right, and now we need the image array layers. Layers only have to deal with um, how how many layers there are in a single image, but that's the kind of thing that would be if we were making a stereoscopic 3D kind of game, which I'm not planning on doing. If you guys want to try and do that, more power to you. So I'm just going to go ahead and say image array layers equals one. It's one layer. It's a 2D image. Even if it's a 3D game, it's a 2D image. And then we're going to go ahead and say create info. This is going to be image usage. And we're going to set that. This has to do with how we render the images. We're just going to say VK image usage color attachment bit. All right, the next bit of data is going to be create info image sharing mode. And this has to do with uh, uh, if you have multiple Q families, how the images will be shared across them. Uh, we intentionally looked for a Q family that supported everything, so it's only using a single one. We don't need to worry about that, so we're just going to set it to VK sharing mode exclusive and simplify things a bit for us. All right, the next bit of data is going to tell the swap chain if we want to transform the image in any way. So flip it, rotate it, any of that stuff. This is the image itself, not what we're seeing in the images. So this doesn't have to do with like rotating objects or anything like that. And we don't really want to do that. So we're going to go ahead and say create info. And this is pre-transform. And we're going to set it to swap chain support capabilities current transform. So we're just using whatever transform it already has. All right, so next up we have create info composite alpha. Okay, this has to do with the transparency of the images, again, of themselves, not of what's being displayed in the images. 
and we don't really want there to be any transparency in the image itself so it's going to be VK composite where is it alpha opaque bit KHR okay and then for the present mode we just assign the one we already retrieved so create info present mode equals present mode and we're going to go ahead and the next one is create info clipped and this is just a, a boolean saying whether or not we want clipping and we do because we don't want to render anything that's being blocked by something else so we're going to say vk true and the last bit of data is for the old swap chain which is used if you have to create a new one and you already have one active. We're only using one swap chain, so we're just going to set that to null. So, create info old swap chain equals vk null handle. Alright, and so that should be everything we need to get the swap chain running. It should work successfully. We haven't actually called this function yet though, so I'm just going to grab create swap chain. We're going to move back up to the top, and after all these create calls, we're going to just drop create swap chain right in there. And let's see if we can actually get this to run. So, have it compile, and see if it's happy. Hopefully we get that output telling us that the swap chain was created successfully. Everything is running really slow. It's possible that my computer is doing something right now. No, I guess we're okay. All right, here we go. Come on. You can do it. Ah, there we go. Wonderful. So we still have a blank screen. We expected that. But the good news is right here. You'll notice we now have a swap chain created successfully output. So nothing's broken. It's working nicely. And we should be happy about that. So we've got a lot done there. We're not quite done yet, though. Because we have our swap chain, but the swap chain is, like we said before, a queue of images. And we don't have any images. So we should probably get on that. So let's hop back over to the .h file. We're going to scroll down here. And where do we put it? There we go. So right underneath the swap chain, we need to create a vector of images that are contained in it. So we're just going to go ahead and do std vector. And it's going to be a vector of VK images. All right. And we'll just call this swap chain images. And these don't actually need to be wrapped in a vDeleter because they're going to be contained within the swap chain. It'll take care of that for us. So now that we have that, we're going to need to actually populate that vector with the images from the swap chain. So if we go back over to the CPP file, we're going to go back down to where we created the swap chain. And right after it's successfully created, just underneath that, we're going to go ahead and populate the vector. So we're going to call VK, oh, VK get swap chain images khr there it is and if you just take a look at that that wants a bunch of stuff it wants the logical device again it wants the swap chain it wants an image count and then a pointer to the swap chain images um, once again that's something uh, this is going to be another situation where we're going to have to call a function twice once to get the size and then once to populate it so actually i'm going to just copy and paste this. It's always tricky doing a copy and paste, so be careful you don't mess anything up. And this is going to be logical device, uh, swap chain, a reference to image count, and then null pointer. And then we just call swap swap chain, oh, no, not swap chain, sorry, swap chain images, resize, and we're just going to resize it to the image count. There we go. And then once again, call it again, pass in most of the, uh,
And then, of course, for the pointer, we do, or the pointer to the data, swap chain images, data. And so that'll just fill it in with everything we need. So that will, here, let's put a little note for that. Just populate, swap chain image vector. There you go. So that'll grab all of the images that we need. Now we're also going to want to make some variables to store the current format and the extent, because we're going to need those variables a little bit later on. So if we hop back over to planetvulcan.h, we're just going to add those down here, a little bit lower down. So store, swap, chain, just say details. And so we want a VK format. It's going to be swap chain, ah, swap chain image format. And we're also going to have VK extent 2D again. That's going to be swap chain extent. All right, and then just at the end of the creating swap chain function that we wrote, we're going to assign those. So we're just going to say swap swap chain image format equals surface format dot format and swap chain extent equals extent. So now we won't need to retrieve those again, they're stored and we can access them at any time. This is kind of obvious, but I just want to label it so we can tell that it's a separate part. For chosen surface for format and extent. Okay, cool. So we have all that. Now we actually are going to need to create a way to access those images because we have our swap chain, we have the images, we don't really have any way of like interfacing with those images. So we actually need what's called an image view. That's what um, Vulkan uses to send data to the images themselves. Now, since we just made a bunch of swap chain images and it's a certain number that we don't actually know, it's in this vector, we're gonna have to create a vector of swap chain images with one, I'm sorry, swap chain image views with one image view for every image in this vector. So. First off, we're going to need to declare another variable for that. And the image views are going to need a vDeleter to be cleaned up. So we're going to declare std vector. And these are all going to be of vDeleter type. And that's going to be containing a vk image view. Image view, there it is. And so we're using the format of the vDeleter where we're not actually giving it a deleter function yet. We're going to be giving it that later on when we actually assign, or well, we declare each image view within this uh, vector. So we'll just call this swap chain image views. There we go. Now there's something I did a little wrong there. What is it? Oh, pfft. I don't know why I put that equals there. It's on the assignment. Yeah, so that's the name of it. I Sometimes your brain just doesn't work the way you want it to. So, there we go. Swap chain image views. So now that we have that, we're going to need to create another function to create all of those image views. So right up here, right underneath create swap chain, we're going to do another void create image views. Once again, just grab that, drag it over to the CPP, we'll drop it right underneath where we set up the swap chain, give it the proper scope, give it a body, and you know, just to kind of plan ahead, let's bring it up here right now and just drop it underneath create swap chain. That way we won't forget. So it'll automatically be called. Right now, if we were to run it, it wouldn't do anything, but at least we know it's there for us. And here we go again. 
So before we do anything, we want to make sure that the swap chain image views vector is the same size as the swap chain images because they all need to be associated. So we're just going to go ahead and oh, here we go. Swap chain image views and resize. And we're just going to resize it to swap chain images dot size. And then we also need to declare it with a proper delete function. So we're going to go ahead and say vdeleter. It's going to be a vk image view. There we go. And that's getting passed in the logical device. And a vk destroy image view. So that's everything we need there. It's going to go ahead and run through, resize everything, so we have the proper number of image views, and it's going to make sure that they're declared with the correct uh, destroy function. So now that we have that, we're going to need to iterate through every single image and create an image view for it. So the way we do that, we just make a for loop. And we're going to say for uint 32t, i, set it to 0. Uh, if it's less than swap chain images dot size, we will increase it. So that'll iterate through all the swap chain images. And on every single one of those, we are going to call a create function. So let's do this backwards like we always do. So if it's going to be vk create image view, and we need to pass in it's the logical device the create info that we're, as always, going to declare in a minute. Uh, null pointer for the allocator. And then swap chain image views. This is going to be a little different, not a lot, but we're actually calling it on whatever the current image view is, because we're iterating through, and we're going to call this multiple times. So swap chain image views at i replace. We check that against if it equals vk success. And this time I'm not going to give it a an else where it tells you that it was successful, because if I did, you'd get a million of those. Well, not a million, but as many images as you've declared, which might be a lot. So instead, we're, gonna, we're still going to do the throw std runtime error. Just say failed to create image views. And then outside of the for loop, if it actually gets through the whole thing, then we're going to say that we did it successfully. You don't need to know about each individual image views. You just care if they were all made or not. So image views created successfully. And line. OK. So that's what we need. Now we get to fill out another create info straight info. Create info. All right. So there we have that. Now we fill out each one of the details. So we've been doing this a lot. S type equals VK structure type image image view there we go image view create info hooray oh, it's running a little slow again give it a sec there we go okay come on isn't that hard guys there we go okay so create info dot image we're just going to assign that to swap chain images at i. So each one will have it, its association with the proper image. We do create info view type. And this is going to be vk image view type 2D. Go 
And the reason we use 2D is because we're using a 2D texture in this case. All right, so then create info.format. And this is why we stored the format before. We're just going to pass in swap chain image format. Okay, now we need the create info components. So create info components. And there's red, green, blue, and alpha. So this would allow us to change how those are set up. So um, we're going to set it to like, there's one for R. There we go. And these are all going to be identical. We're just going to have to change the, the value. But it's going to be VK. Come on, VK. Component, swizzle, and we're looking for identity. So that means just go with the default setting, and setting for it. And if you're wondering what swizzling is, it has to do with how you order the color components. Um, we don't want to do anything strange with that because it's not going to do us any good. We just want the colors to come out as we expect them. So I just copied this four times. You need one with R, one with G, one with B, and one with A. And that's for red, green, blue, and alpha, like I said. All right, and then finally there is a subsource range data member, and that handles how the images are accessed. We don't really need any uh, mip mapping levels or layers, and we're using the images as color targets, so we're just going to set it to the following. So it's just uh, create info, uh, subsource range, aspect mask, and that's going to be VK image aspect color bit, then create info, it's going to be a lot of subsource ranges, uh, base MIP level, we'll just set to zero, create info, subsource range, uh, level count, it's going to be uh, one, Kind of tedious work here, but we'll be done soon. Subsource range, base array layer, zero. Create info, one more. Subsource range, layer count is one. And that should do it. So this should set up all of our image views with the settings that we need. It'll run through all of the swap chain images, create an image view for each one, and if everything goes successfully, we should have an image views created successfully output at the end. So let's try running it, see what we get. Hopefully things run a little faster than earlier. Perfect, that went really fast. All right, and there you go. We have image views created successfully. So that is all for this episode. It's been a long process, and I know everybody's eager to get to some actual display, but it's getting there. Almost there, and in the next episode, we're actually going to be setting up the graphics pipeline, so we're finally going to get to work towards getting something on the screen. I'm not sure that's going to happen in the next episode, but it's coming soon. So things are going to get a little bit different in the next episode since we're moving on to that graphics pipeline. Anyways, thanks for sticking with me this far. As always, uh, just comment if you have any questions or suggestions about how the video should be done, and subscribe if you'd like to know when another episode is being released. Thanks for watching.